Good morning, everybody. I'm going to attempt to elevate my voice so that you can hear me over the river. It's just there. Um, I've got numerous projects that are all starting simultaneously. So rather than it being like a lot of builds where somebody starts something and finishes something, I've got like five things on the go that I think will make for interesting projects. Um, so I'm going to do an intro to all five of those and then a playlist at a later date. So it'll be like episodes 13, 27, 46 and 59. So we'll put them in a playlist and then if you're interested in just one particular subject, you'll be able to watch it from the start. So this is one of our uh, big projects. Project Turning River Water into Drinking Water. Um, now, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put this video out and people are going to say, oh, you don't need to do that. And uh, when you're in a van, you use less water and all this sort of stuff. I know for a fact that me and Pixie are going to use a heck of a lot of water. A, I like home cooking, like a Sunday roast. So that produces a whole load of pots. Pixie's nodding because she, if I cook the Sunday roast, she's on pot duty. And somehow I managed to use every pot and pan. Um, I'll, I use a shower like a lot of people use a bath. Not only do I use it to get clean, I use it to soak me aching bones. So I do like long showers. And uh, the other thing is uh, we have things like uh, a washing machine, an automatic washing machine. Uh, there is a video, if you're really that interested in the washing machine, there is a video uh, where we clean Liam's bedding, which I'll put a link to here if, <laughs> if you're compelled to go watch it, although it is one of our most popular videos, bizarrely, can't imagine why. Any who's it's, we're gonna use a lot of water. So you've got two choices at that point. You can either have enormous water tanks and drive around the whole time, you know, really weighted down with uh, large water tanks, which then take an age to fill up, by the way, or you can find a way to make your own water. So that's what we're planning on doing. Um, so, first of all, a word of caution about the supply of water from myself. So we need to be a little bit picky about the water that we choose. This river, for example, is quite fast flowing at the moment. All the normal circumstances on a lovely clear day, when it's not been torrential rain, uh, it's lovely and clear. It looks very appetising. You can almost imagine just dipping the glass and then drinking from it straight away. But uh, right at this moment in time, there'll be wash from fields in it. There's been lots of heavy rainfall, and so all the neighbouring fields will be feeding into this. Those neighbouring fields are occupied under normal circumstances by one of two things. Uh, either crops, in which case there's a risk of pesticides, insecticides and fertiliser being in the water, which you probably don't want to drink, or the other resident of those fields is sheeps. Um, and sheep's poop in fields. So the other thing that's contained there within that water at this moment in time is sheep, sheep poop. And I don't think that is particularly advertising. So it's not just a case of pulling up next to any water source and utilizing that. We've got to think about it first. Right, okay, now that's over, I'm gonna chat you through the bits and pieces that I'm gonna use in order to make this happen. So. Uh, just to be clear, I want to take river water and put it on board Poppy or a lake or a reservoir or something as I've just before mentioned, I've got to be cautious about where I get the water from. But I don't want to be dumping stuff back into the water. If you uh, are on a yacht, uh, you might have a water maker on board and the water maker takes water out of the sea, desalinates it, purifies it but there's a waste product involved with that as well, which gets dumped back overboard. Now, I don't think anyone's gonna particularly mind me taking water out of a river, but they're soon gonna get their knickers in a twist if I start dumping water back into a river, even though it might be purified or it might be a, a waste product of the purification process or whatever, I've gotta be really careful. So a lot of thought has gone into this and uh, I've had a tremendous amount of help from a company called East Midlands Water Company. Um, just by chance, I contacted them, uh, gave them a call, and they were absolutely blinding. My shopping experiences 
throughout this whole process has varied from absolutely appalling, which I'll get to in, a, in another subject, to fantastic. And by far, this is one of the best companies I've had any dealings with at all. They were so helpful and they were passionate and excited about the project as well. Now, you might say that making river, uh, drinking water from river water isn't probably sexy enough for you to wheedle your way into Gloria Estefan's undergarments, and that might very well be true. But for me, as an individual looking for advice on water filters, they came in very, very, very useful, so I'm very grateful to them. Um, by the way, I'm not affiliated, nor have I received some discount for mentioning them or anything along those lines. Uh, they, they, they have, I, I, I'm sure they don't know that this is what we're, we're doing, the YouTube that is. But anyway, onward. So, first thing I've got to do when taking your river water is pass it through some sort of pre-pump filter. Now these are the ones that are supplied with Michore Flow pumps. I'm going to beef this up a little bit because it's going to have to deal with twigs and leaves and all sorts of things floating along in the river but that you get the idea it's that sort of thing that's going to help the pump out okay then onward to quite a high pressure pump these sea flow pumps range pretty considerably in terms of their delivery um, this is a pressure switch pump which means if i for example turn a valve or a tap on at one end this realises the drop in pressure and then starts pushing water through. So I don't have to attend this pump. I can't overrun this pump or anything along those lines. If I shut water off when the tanks are full, I can trundle on down to the water side and this hasn't burnt itself out or anything along those lines. And I'm a big fan of these. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This is the one that we're going to use to pull the water out of the river. That's the one for the kitchen sink, for example. Same brand, but just a much smaller version of. This is the one we've uh, let Liam have as well for his kitchen sink, and they're, they're, I've been really impressed with them so far. Cheapest chips as well, that's like 20 quid. That, so, any who's it. So, strainer or pre pump filter into pump. So the pump needs to go very near to the water supply. Then along all those, which has to be food grade, okay? Because otherwise, if we just use a conventional hose, we could end up poisoning ourselves. Uh, not straight away, but over the course of time. Uh, and then, <laughs> into the, I bought it, but then it ended up looking bigger than it did in the image on the internet scenario. So anyway, uh, <laughs> it then goes through a triple filter okay uh, in at this end and out at this end now uh, I'm, i'll get into the specifics of the actual filter cartridges that end up in there at a later date because i'm going to experiment slightly with them until i'm completely happy but the resultant water that comes out at the end of here is good enough to wash our clothes with and good enough to shower with that's very important, okay? That's a, a real important thing to remember. The water coming out of here, automatically we can shower with that straight away. However, um, it's not good enough for drinking. So, the next stage. And this is where the evil, evil geniusness of this comes in. This is a reverse osmosis filter. Now, Going back to what I said about yachts, reverse osmosis filters are uh, popular on boats to desalinate water, to make it possible that you can drink the water that the boat's floating in. But the way that they work, this sort of filter, and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this, some of you won't be, but uh, a regular filter, whether it be an oil filter on a car, whether it be an air filter, whether it be a water filter, You've got like a semi-permeable membrane that your stuff passes through and the junk gets caught on the filter. So every so often you either have to wash the filters out or you have to replace them. A reverse osmosis filter doesn't work like that. You have water going in, then you have drinking water coming out, and then you have a waste product called brine. 
and the brine is the dirty bit. The brine is the um, the result of the filtration process. So rather than having a filter that clogs, the, the, the you just waste some water. Now this filters water we think at the moment at a two to one ratio. So if I take if I pump three liters of water through it, I get one liter of drinking water and two liters of brine. So if this were aboard a boat, you'd pump three liters in there, one liter would go in your fresh water tanks, two liters would end up back in the sea or the river or whatever, okay? Now I've already said I don't want to dump things in the river because people will get suspicious, but as well as that, it doesn't seem very elegant. It's not a very good solution. You, you're processing a load of water and the water going in here, we've made sure is already good enough for our shower. So, how about this for an idea? 50 litre drinking water tank, 100 litre water tank for shower and washing machine, okay? And then what you do is, from the back end of this, you couple into here, and for every litre of water that goes into our drinking water tank, two litres of water go into our shower tank. So we're A, not throwing anything aboard, B, processing water much quicker. This will process water about five litres a minute, we think at this moment in time. So at that point, I'm getting two litres of drinking water and three litres, well, one and a bit drinking water, three and a bit um, uh, shower water for every minute that we're there. So the stuff's big and bulky. It's not particularly heavy, I have to say, but it's big and bulky so that we can do things fast. The alternative is, by, uh, and I, actually I'll put up an illustration now, uh, so that it's all starting to make a bit of sense rather than me just yabbering endlessly. Um, but you can buy under the sink for, for people's houses, might be the other place where they've seen a reverse osmosis pump, pump uh, uh, filter. You open the cupboard door and you're greeted by all these pipes and wires and whatnot and they work differently they generally have a tank and the tank fills up slowly over time so those sort of things generally process water about five liters an hour okay so if we fitted one of those systems we'd have to go somewhere park up be there all night and have not processed a whole lot of water whereas with this tankless system the idea being that we can be somewhere out in the middle of the countryside, which is where we intend to be, at a picturesque spot, throw a hose into the water and fill up the tanks in no time. So there we are. This is the introduction. This is the parts we're hoping to use to get this job done. Part two is going to be testing it, I suppose, and making sure it does deliver on its promises. Number three is going to be installing it. Uh, number four, I suppose, is going to be a bit of a more long-term test as to whether it's worked or not. So that's as I'm predicting things are going to go at this moment in time. Join me in part two, which will be episode I've no idea at this moment in time. But there we are. That's, that's the genesis of this project. Thanks ever so much for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.